Seattle and Portland lie in ruins. The devastation spread 600 miles along the Pacific coast. Rivers burn. 45,000 injured or dead. This is a big problem, and we're living inside the time bomb. Bridges, at least half would be collapsed or damaged. The police department, half of those. The hospital, two thirds devastated. Entire towns swept away. It could take decades to rebuild. We're gonna have blackouts for months at a time. We're looking at years of recovery. This disaster hasn't struck yet, but it will. We're in a race, and it's a race that we're going to lose. What will trigger the catastrophe? Now, using the latest scientific data, we can peer deep inside our planet to reveal the mounting danger right under our feet. It's going to be the most devastating event that's ever taken place in North America. Seattle is in a race to shore up its past. But a long-duration quake also threatens its modern buildings. A $100 million refit has helped make the iconic Space Needle earthquake-proof. One down, dozens to go. And remember, Seattle sits on a sedimentary basin, the geological equivalent of a castle built on sand. We know that a basin will amplify the magnitude of the actual earthquake, and the ground shaking will be significantly larger. The other concern is it slows down the actual shaking. Imagine a skyscraper as a giant tuning fork. You're going to really feel the effects. It will move tens of feet at the very top of the structure. We haven't really seen that level of shaking to this type of structure in the US ever. Uh, 9.0 and above is not something that these structures are really designed to handle. It's not just the sedimentary basin that could make a Cascadia fault quake so deadly. Kobe, Japan. A magnitude 6.9 quake shook the port. Tens of thousands were killed or injured. Some of the worst destruction took place on land reclaimed from the sea. The ground turned to quicksand. It's called liquefaction. Land is reclaimed by pouring infill over water or marshland to create solid ground. But beneath the surface, it's saturated with water. When the earthquake hits, the infill is shaken apart and the water trapped below rises, turning solid ground to quicksand. It's coming out, it's liquefying, and you see the structure itself is starting to lean over. Could this happen in the Pacific Northwest? Earthquake hazard reports reveal pockets of liquefiable land surrounding Seattle and Portland. One area, on the edge of Oregon's Willamette River, alarms engineers. It's made of two distinct layers. On top is new, densely packed soil. But the layer below is saturated with water. Perfect conditions for liquefaction. If the land were vacant, the risk would be slight. But it's not. It's a huge depot that stores 90% of Oregon's gasoline and diesel, six miles along the banks of the Willamette River. A magnitude nine earthquake could be disastrous. You'll see these tanks sort of moving. At some point, within a few seconds, you'll see the soil starting to fail. It loses all its resistance to be able to carry any sort of load, almost like quicksand. Uh, it becomes a liquid and everything sinks into it. 
In some cases, you'll see the whole barrier fail, and they'll come out to the river and begin to float. Millions of gallons of highly flammable fuel could flood the river. Just downstream from the depot are high voltage cables. These towers are very, very tall, very flexible towers. They're going to be susceptible to liquefaction. If the towers fall, a single spark could ignite the fuel. Portland's lifeline could become a river of fire. Cities destroyed. Rivers ablaze. And that's just the start. 